Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to talk about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Cat, And I'm Jess. And today we're talking about number 238, In the Mood for Love, which is a Chinese film. Yep. And it is also a drama romance film from 2000. It has an 8.1 on 97,653 votes. The spoiler-free synopsis, in 1962, journalist journalist Chow Mo Wan and his wife move into, Hong, into a Hong Kong apartment, but Chow's spouse is often away on business. Before long, the lonely Chow makes the acquaintance of the alluring Sh- Su Lin Zin, whose, other, whose own significant other has... God. <laughs> I can't talk. Whose own significant other also seems preoccupied with work. As the two friends realize their respective partners are cheating on them, they begin to fall for one another. However, neither wants to stoop to the level of the unfaithful spouses. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I think that's the entire movie there. I wish I had just read that instead of watched the movie. <laughs> Actors and directors. <laughs> okay, so the director is, um, excuse me for chopping this up, it's all in Chinese. So, uh, the director is Car Wei Wong, who did this movie, uh, one like that came out a few years afterwards is 2046 and The Grandmaster. And our actors, um, one of the actors was in Infernal Affairs. Yep. Uh, the lead male actor in this one, Tony Chu Wei Lung, Maggie Chung, and Ping Lam Lam Su. Well, that was a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> I was reading it on here as you were doing it. I was like, I would not have been able to pronounce this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All I right. tried. You did a good job. All right. So, Rotten Tomatoes, the average rating is a 7.8. It has 89% on 123 reviews, 110 fresh, 113 rotten. No, just 13 rotten. I was like, 113? God. (laughs) We're both tired. Yes. Okay. So, we have a new segment-ish. Yeah. So, here it goes. Too fresh, David Denby so skillfully does the director brings us to a state of breathless expectation that when he refuses to deliver the goods he almost seems to have invented a new form of perversion. Okay, I can see that. Well, yeah, because they don't ever actually do anything. They never do anything. This is pretty much just like teasing you the entire time. Yeah. Just a little bit. And then Jack Matthews, another fresh review. In the Mood is a love story told from the point of impact at the heart, and no conventional resolution could be more profound. Okay. <laughs> I guess. I mean, sure. Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> All right. And to Rotten, the first one, Peter Rayner, Wong Kar Wai tricks up the smalts with a lot of avant- avant-garde. Oh, okay. Avant-garde. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Avant-garde filigree. He's that most suspect of hybrids. A pop schlock aesthetic. Aesthetic. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> Seems hard to understand half the words in that. <laughs> I'm gonna say okay. <laughs> Just go with it. Okay. And Stephen Hunter. I wish I could report that a feverish erotic tension builds, but it really doesn't. Well, he's got a point there. He does. That's funny. (laughs) Alright, and the consensus. This understated romance featuring good performances by its leads is both visually beautiful and emotionally moving. I'll agree with visually beautiful. I did like the photography and all of the colors. I don't think it was emotionally moving. I was confused half of the film. (laughs) Same. Alright. So, income. Could not find anything about the budget, but in the U.S. it made $2,738,980, 
internationally it made ten million hundred and fifteen thousand nine hundred and seventy three dollars so total it made twelve million eight hundred fifty four thousand nine hundred and fifty three dollars worldwide the opening weekend it made a hundred and thirteen thousand two hundred eighty dollars which is pretty good for an opening weekend yeah it's not bad which my guess is it opened in china first probably its all-time domestic rank is 6,339, because okay. it did not make a lot of money. Yeah. And the highest all-time rank was 2,909, with, or that was on August 28, 2002. So two years after it came out? Yep. So, for the awards, it won 44 and was nominated for 47. So they won most of them. Yeah. So I'm not going to uh, read all of them. I just copied a few down. It won quite a few Best Foreign Films. Um, the Asia Pacific Film Festival, it won Best Cinematography and Best Editing. The Asian Film Critics, Maggie Cheng won Best Actress, the, the Cannes Film Festival, Tony Chai Wai Lung, uh, I... <laughs> he won Best Actor, um, they have a Best Makeup and Costume Design from the Golden Horse Film Festival, and pretty much all of them are the exact same. All of their awards are the, ex the same, so I just copied down those. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I didn't feel like copying them all down if it was all the same thing. Yeah, and plus there's like 47 nominations. Yeah. I can see why you didn't want to. Yes. Alright. Initial thoughts. <clears throat> well, I will admit, I'm like, okay, I have to really focus because it's a foreign film. It's in Chinese. we got to read subtitles. Mm -hmm. And that always puts a little strain on trying to focus on the film. And honestly, eh on this film. Maybe because I'm not a big like romance person. I don't know but I was like, Ugh. It seemed really like choppy. It was just hard to follow. Yeah. I was super confused the whole time and didn't know what was happening until we were like 30 minutes left in the movie and by then I was already done watching it. Like didn't want to watch it anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like this film. Yeah. I'm like, it's all right. <laughs> all right, that was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening until you've watched it and come back here. So you want to start? All right, so it started like with this captioned cards that has some like a saying or something. I completely I mean I kind of saw it but I was doing something else so I missed it. Yeah. It says something <laughs> and then it goes to talk it says that it's in Hong Kong in 1962. Yeah I did catch that. <laughs> I was like okay got a setting a time we're good there. Yep. So there's this woman she's talking to this other woman she's trying to get like an apartment. Yeah it seemed like this lady had a room for rent in her apartment. Yeah. And, uh, Chan, which is, she's Mrs. Chan. Pretty much throughout the entire film. Yeah. Um, she was looking for a room for her and her husband to live in. She's like, my husband's name is Chan. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we're so, just gonna go with that. Yep. Yeah. so she's Mrs. Wait. No, she's Mrs. Chow. Chan is the guy. No. Yeah. Oh. Yep. You were right. I was right the first time. You were right the first time. We're oh good. My bad. Oh my bad. <laughs> I, like, I, I made back. sure. I wrote I'm, it backwards one time. <laughs> I had to make sure I was keeping track of it too. I was like, okay, right people. And then, so then we see after she gets to the room, this guy comes up and you don't really find out his name for a little bit, but his name's uh, Chow. Yep. And he asked about the room. She's like, oh, well, someone, that lady just took it. Yeah. But my neighbor has a room, room that his son, his son just moved. So he has a room. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. 
So then they're all like moving in on like the same day. Yeah. I was like, that's a little chaotic. And it's kind of weird. It seemed like the movers were like taking all of the stuff out of the same truck because they didn't know whose stuff belonged to who. Yeah. They were like, oh, this is the wrong way. They're like, this is the wrong apartment. It's theirs. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, a little disorganized there, but okay. We'll go with that. Yeah. And then pretty much like, it seems like right after she moves in. Uh, Mrs. Chan moves in. She has to go pick up her husband from the airport. Yeah. Because he's getting back from a business trip. So she was moving in by herself. He wasn't even there to help. Yeah. But he's like never there anyways. Yeah. I noticed this during the entire film that their spouses like Mr. Chan and Mrs. Chow Uh um, you don't see their faces. Yep. At all. You hear their voices. But you, you hear the voices. Their voices. You kind of see like you never see their faces at all. But I think that that was on purpose. Yeah. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I noticed that too. They're both working. Yeah. I mean, and Mrs. Chan uh, is talking on the phone at work, and she's trying. She's covering for her boss because her boss is going out with some other lady for dinner, but she has to tell her boss's wife, that he has long meetings, so he's not going to be home till late. Yeah, completely covering from Like, yes. wow. There's a lot of cheating going on in this film. And she does that throughout the film, and that kind of reminded me of 9 to 5, slightly, with Dolly Parton's character. She has to do all kinds of stupid stuff for her boss. Yeah. And she doesn't like doing it, but he's her boss, so she has to. But it's not exactly the same because her boss is saying that they're having an affair when they're not. So. Oh. Okay, but this I one they that. are. I love. Yeah, they are having an affair. Yeah. I love that movie. I have not seen that film. Oh my. It's God. like what? See, look at that. It, this happens, you know. There's films that I haven't seen that cat has seen. I so. love that movie. So nine to five. Yes. Okay, I'll have to watch it then. You got Dolly Parton in it. That's the only name I know. I mean, I would recognize the other ladies if I'd seen them in something else, but yeah. I just... Dolly Parton is just so distinct that you know her no matter what. I mean, yeah, it's Dolly. She has very distinct... Just everything. You know, every... <laughs> yes, everything. <laughs> Alright. So... And then I noticed there's this rice cooker yeah. thing, too, because everyone's all excited. There's this fancy rice cooker, because her husband brought it back. And yep, from Mrs. Mrs. Japan. Yeah, he goes to Japan a lot. Yes. I'm like, okay. A lot of business there. <laughs> and they were all like, well, can you get me a rice cooker? Can you get me a rice cooker? They all wanted a rice cooker. She's like, sure, okay. Um, then there's, I noticed there's, um, because it goes back and forth between the two of them. The two of them. And Chow's talking with this guy. His name's Ping. Yeah. Ping's a very interesting character. He's like his best friend, and... Ping is just, I noticed he's like just very obsessed with like sex and all yes, that. Yes, he's in debt to a whorehouse. In debt to a whorehouse. He's asking uh, Chan for $30 so he can pay his whorehouse debt. Yep. Because he lost his money gambling, is what it seemed like. It could, I didn't really. It was like a, like a horse race yeah, or something. something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that was. I'm like, okay. And since their uh, spouses are always away, they're always eating by themselves and. Yep. Because she always goes down to, like, this little market. To get noodles. To get noodles. Like, you know, that would get really old, like, right away. I mean, I could eat <laughs> noodles literally all day, every day, forever, and not ever be tired of them. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I need a little variety in my life. I could also eat Mexican food all day, every day, for the rest of my life, and not ever get tired of it. <laughs> I, I get tired of it, but it's because, you know... I do too. As <laughs> like family's, you know, kind of Hispanic, kind of. Mine's Texan, so. All right, so we're even. <laughs> we're even there. <laughs> so, um, Ping, <coughs> Ping, is that his name? Yeah. Ping also saw, he told Chan that he saw his wife in the street with some other man. Chow. Yep. And that he should know. And I was like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and Chow and his wife are like fighting a lot, and 
goes this one scene where she's like in this hotel room and she's crying in the shower. Yeah. That I was like, okay. And then there's this man that knocks on the door. I'm like, hmm, I wonder who that is. It's like, okay, all right. At this point, I was still like super confused. Had no idea what was going on. I was trying to follow along as best as I could. I was like it's... writing stuff down, but I didn't. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, uh, Mrs. Chan has a conversation with Miss um, Chow. At the end of it, this is where you find out that they're cheating. Their significant others are cheating, because um, she's talking to her neighbor, which is. Mrs. Chan. Mrs. Chow. God, this is so confusing. <laughs> so, Mrs. Chan is talking to her neighbor, Mrs. Chow, and, uh, cause she heard voices, and, um... And she's like, oh, I'm by myself. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm sick, I just have, you know, like, a headache, Yeah. I'm just gonna go sleep it off, cause, like, Mrs. Chan's like, oh, I have some medicine, what is it? And she's like, oh, it's nothing, I'm just gonna sleep it off. Yeah, and then... At the end, she closes the door, and you hear her say, it was your wife. Yeah. You did hear that. Nice catch. Um, <coughs> then, Miss, Mrs. Chan and Chow have dinner together, and they start becoming friends, because they're kind of guessing towards their It's like, oh, you other. know, your bag looks familiar. Yeah, your tie it, looks familiar. It's like, oh, wait. It's like, come on, people. You're, you're just not hiding it very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, become friends and... They talk to each other at times like they're their significant other. Like they're pretending to be yeah. the other's significant other. And I'm like, that's really weird. That is weird. It's like, okay... And you spend quite a bit of the movie just them kind of getting to know each other and hanging out, having yeah. dinner together. And they're, um, because Mr. Chow is writing, he wants to write a, was it a martial arts serial? Yep. Basically a martial arts manga is what I took Yeah. Out. And so she helps him with it. Yeah. And he gets another apartment so that the neighbors don't, well, the people, their respective people that they live with don't know that they're seeing each other without doing anything really. Like They don't want people to talk, think they're doing things when they're not. Then they're, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I'm like, okay. Because I know, remember they were hiding out in his... Yeah, they were hiding out in his room because um, the ladies that she lives with were in his apartment with their neighbors playing the Mijong tiles. Which, I love that, but I'm just like, I have no idea how that takes literally 24 hours. It to took, yeah, they're like, oh, we're not done. It's like, are you kidding? They said they were going to play eight rounds. It's like eight rounds. It's like, what? And it took them like 24 hours to play. Yeah. Like, a whole day. Like, really? That's, okay. Um, yeah, so you notice after, like, when he gets his own, like, a little place, that his, like, you hear nothing about his wife anymore. Yeah. Like, nothing. I think he has already left his wife at this point. I think so. Whereas she doesn't want to leave her husband, even though she knows that he's cheating on her. Yep. And he kind of takes some time to try and convince her to leave him, but he, she's like, no. I'm not yeah, they even practice. She pra They practice, like, um, like, she's, like... Asking him, like, do you have a mistress? mistress? <laughs> it's like, she's like, it's just a rehearsal. We're just practicing. Well, in the way they filmed it at first, I thought she was actually talking to her husband. But yeah. then they turn it and you're like, oh. You're like, oh, it's just you. Okay. You're just practicing. It's yeah. kind of weird, but okay. Guess that's what friends are for. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It was like... They're working separately, you know, at their respected jobs and everything. Then they meet outside in the rain. Yeah. That was weird. And he runs to go get his umbrella and says that she can go first. But she's like, well, I can't take your umbrella because then they would know. It's like, really? Like, you can't borrow an umbrella from your neighbor? It's like, come on. I'm like, okay. And then Chow tells Miss Chan that 
he like falls for her. And... Yeah, and she's like, "You can't do that. I'm not leaving my husband." And he says, "You won't leave your." He's talking to her about he's gonna move to Singapore because Pig he's over there and he mm-hmm. needs some help. Yep. So and so he says to her, "You won't leave your husband." So I'd rather go. To I'd rather go to Singapore than see her with her husband. Yep. Yeah. So then he does move to Singapore. Yeah, I do. And it's, I guess, a year later. It is a year later from when. Yeah, it says they like, moved. It says on the one that like a, ca- like a caption card. It says Singapore, nineteen sixty three. Oh, I just caught Singapore. I didn't see the nineteen sixty three. I made sure to write that down. <laughs> yeah, okay. Singapore, nineteen sixty three, and he's there working. And, and there's one point when. Um, Miss Chan calls him. Yeah. But she doesn't say anything. He's like, hello, hello, and she doesn't say anything, and then he doesn't say anything, and then she hangs up. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, alright. And then he goes back to Hong Kong for a visit. Yes. And finds out that the person that he was living with no longer lives there. The people next door no longer live there, and some lady moved in with her son and it turns out to be Mrs. Chan Mrs. Chan she has a son my guess is with her husband because they never did anything yeah <laughs> yeah it's with her husband and he's like oh okay and then Chow visits Cambodia to Cambodia in for like, like 19 s- it says Cambodia 1966 so it's yeah like, there's some years passing. I guess it's for like spiritual revival or something. I don't really There's know. There's like, cause you just see what he was doing. He, it looked like he was spitting in the wall or something. He was whispering in okay. the wall. I, I couldn't tell. There's this thing earlier on he was telling, talking to Ping about he's not, you're not like, I, like if you have the secrets but you can't tell anybody that you go to like this wall and you whisper your secret in there. And they put dirt over it, but then no one then is done with. I know it's weird. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the film. Yeah, that it's, was really freaking short. Yeah, it was like so. I just <laughs> hour and a half though. Yeah, the movie was an hour and a half, but I spent most of it confused. I was pretty confused for the most part until I was like, okay. Now I know what's going on, but that was, like, halfway through the film. Yeah. So, music. There is one song (laughs) that they just continuously (laughs) played over and over and over again, and I don't know, like, I don't know what it was supposed to signify or or anything. They just played it over and over and over for these different scenes, and I'm just like, what in the world? I was trying to conduct it. I'm like, it's kind of like a waltz. Yeah. It was like a waltz. And every time I came on, Kat got annoyed. She's like, again? The song wasn't <laughs> bad. It's just that they kept using it for what seemed to me like no reason. Yeah. I get you. And there was a, I, Kat was like, is that Spanish? There's like, quite a few Spanish songs. And I'm like, yeah, that is Spanish, actually. There's quite a few Spanish songs. And a lot of Nat King Cole, actually. Yeah, there was quite a bit of Nat King Cole as well. Yeah, uh, Nat King Cole sang three of them. That's cool. Yeah, and then... Yeah. See, there's all this music, and I'm like, no, I heard one... No, like, three songs. And there's, like, this whole list of songs. Yeah, it literally seemed like the same song over and over again. Yeah. And then some Nat King Cole songs. That's about it. I don't know where any of this music came from, because I didn't hear most of it. So... It might have, been, might have been, like, background music. I guess. That we couldn't catch that well, because we're so focused on trying to understand what was going on. That's true. Yeah. I think that's what it was. That's a very high possibility. Because we usually get the music. Yeah. We're like, okay, this We were concentrating. The, the, literally, the <coughs> only two songs that I heard were the one that they kept repeating over and over and over and then the one that I'm like, this is a Spanish song. Why is it a Chinese film? Yeah, I'm like, okay. Like, I didn't, didn't, didn't connect those two. Didn't think that that would ever occur. 
But, I mean, whatever, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, that works. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you got some trivia? There's not much trivia. Not gonna lie. There's not much. So, the inspiration from the, for this film is steamed from a Japanese short story concerning two characters who often walk by each other in a stairwell but do not converse. In that story, the characters end up committing suicide. Well... <laughs> This had a happier ending than that. Just a little bit. I mean, no one died there. <laughs> no suicide there. Uh, the filming took about 15 months to complete. Yeah. 15. Well, I mean, if they had to wait on weather quite a bit, then... But most of the time they make their own weather. And there was one time that I could tell that they made their own rain. Yeah. Because I was like, that is not real. <laughs> You're like, that's, that's not real rain. <laughs> and then one more. So our main female lead... Um, her makeup and hair, it says it took about five hours every time to apply. I can believe that. Which I can kind of see. I mean, she had, like, every dress she had, it was something, it was a different dress every mm -hmm. single time. Then we did see one dress twice. It was, like, a black and white, very thin, striped dress. I saw that twice. Okay. I was uh, like, I don't remember seeing the same dress twice, but... That's, that's the only one I saw twice. The rest of them... If, if they're really pretty dresses. They are. I don't like dresses. I do. <laughs> I noticed. I was like, those are gorgeous. I would want one. I kind of have one like that, actually. It's polka dots, though. <laughs> Blue and pink. There polka dots. And that's awesome. There you go. All right, that's about all the trivia I got there. All right, so favorite line. I wrote down a couple. All right, you go first. Uh, the first one I wrote down is Miss um, Chan, the lady that she lives with. She's, like, walking into the living room or something, yeah. and she goes, they're all starving. We can eat. Those. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you should eat before you're starving. It's like, that's a little weird, but okay. Um, Mrs. Chan is saying to her boss, after, like, with the tie thing, yeah. she's like, you notice things if you pay attention. Yeah, that's true. And another one I thought, I think this one's my favorite. Okay. I think this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one I have. Because the other one we already talked about, and I just needed it for, like, storyline. It's not a quote I wanted to talk about. Um, this one is, again, the lady that she lives with. Yeah. She goes, she dresses up like that to go get noodles. <laughs> I wrote that one down, too, actually. <laughs> That's that one of mine. Hilarious. That made me giggle. It's like, ha! Okay, that one was one of mine, and then my other one was... Um, Chow's telling, you know, Miss Chan how he feels. Oh. He says, feelings can creep up just like that. I thought I was in control. I must have missed that one. Yeah. That was like the one romantic little part there. Mm. I, lo I like the dress one. Yeah, I like she the dress dresses one. up like She dresses up like that to go out for noodles. Yeah, I thought that was the one. I'm like, well, if you're going to dress up, I mean, yeah. Do it all up. All right. And where it has been on the list before and now. So it was on the 2010 list at number 237. And then it was also on the 2014 list at number 241. And at the moment, it is still at number 238. <laughs> and previously, number 238 from the 2010 list was Arsenic and Old Lace from 1994. The 2012 list, Mystic River from 2003. The 2014 list, The Hustler from 1961, the 2016 list, Barry Lyndon from 1975, and then now, of course, In the Mood for Love. Yeah. And our rating. Alright, so I gave it a six, because I was being nice. <laughs> um, what I think it is because we said earlier that it was just kind of just choppy and it didn't really flow that well. It was really hard to understand. Yeah. And me and Kat were like, well, part of it is because it's in Chinese, but even if it was in English, we would still would have a hard time understanding. Yeah. That's why. Because I didn't miss very many of the subtitles and I only missed like a couple when I was writing something. Yeah. And even then... I didn't understand what was going on. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest flow. It didn't really move well. No. I gave it a four because I was just so confused the whole time. And then by the, by the time I actually knew what was going on, I was doing something else. Yeah. 
So, give it a four. Give it a four. Yep. And next time is Jaws from 1975. Da -da. I love Jaws. Da -da. Famous, <laughs> famous music from that. Yes, award-winning music. It's like, thank you, John Williams. <laughs> yes. So, we are running a contest. One person out of ten that leave a positive written review will be randomly selected to join for a movie of their choice. Um, it'll be a movie on the list. It won't be any of our events because we already have guests for most of the events. And we don't want to put you through the torture of seven hours of recording. <laughs> was it really that long? It was that long. <laughs> um, we just got done recording our Harry Potter event yesterday. And I have to somehow manage to shorten that. <laughs> Like that, it was a lot of talking. We had our two guests on, and yes, that was a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, we will let you pick a movie of your choice uh, if you are the winner. But yeah, we already have our first winner. Yep, we do have our first winner. I can read his review in just a minute. I just gotta pull it up. It's um, a very nice review. Yes. And what film is he gonna do? Is it He's gonna do Dead Poet Society, which is number 235, so it's three movies away coming up very He's soon. be on there with us. If you do leave a review, um, if you could email it to us or send us a message that has it, like screenshot it, send it as a message, that way we can um, see that you've done it. Because sometimes I don't see them all. Yeah. So I just need to make sure that it's, <laughs> that it's there. So his review, this is um, from Matthew B N Y. And he's actually known as Maester Ironwood on his own podcast, the Ice and Fire Pod. Ironwood Network podcast is oh. his show. He's talking about the Game of Thrones books, chapter by chapter. It's very funny. Nice. Um, so he said, I love a good movie podcast, and this one is no exception. For a new show just getting its wings established in the breeze, it's a great listen. I always recommend when people are looking for something to listen to. If you've got an hour, give it a listen. I think you will be pleasantly surprised by the great combination of actual information, jokes, and banter. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. That helps. Yes. All right, so where to find us? So you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jess. Cat and Jess talk the best. <laughs> I'm tired. That's all right. <laughs> our email is Cat and Jess talk the best 250 at Gmail. Mm -hmm. And our website is Cat and Jess talk the best dot podbean dot com. Yeah, feel free to contact us. Oh, yeah. We're nice. Yep. Because I finally got it on my phone to where I can actually access the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook as well as keep my own personal ones. Yeah. I keep track of the Facebook could well. Yeah, you do that. I am on it sometimes. I just kind of look at it, but I don't really do anything on it. I run the Facebook page pretty much. Yep. So. And I do Twitter and Instagram. I don't really post a lot on them. No. But if you talk to us, we will respond. Yes, we will. And to listen to the show, we're on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, Pretty much everywhere at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Took us a while, but we're... Yeah, we got it. We got it all. And Audio Binger, he does all of our music. Uh, you can find his stuff on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. Yeah, he's got some really good songs. Like, mm -hmm. I'm excited for the Harry Potter one, because that's a really good song. Yeah, it actually, without being Harry Potter music, reminds you of Harry Potter. So. It did. I was like, this is it. This is it. Yep. So thank you. Yes. All right. I think that's it. I think so. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. There she has a porg. I do have a porg. He's so cute.